Good afternoon. Thanks for coming to this talk. My name is Yang Tang, and I'm a maintainer of GoDNS project. Uh, this is my GitHub account. Uh, in today's talk, my focus is on reliable service discovery. I will take, talk about GoDNS and its usage in Kubernetes, the limitation of DNS for service discovery, and finally, GoDNS over gRPC to address some of the issues we encounter. CoreDNS is a flexible DNS server written in Go. It has a plugin-based architecture, which means it could easily be extended for customized plugins with new functionalities. CoreDNS supports DNS, DNS over TOS, and DNS over gRPC. One note for DNS over gRPC is that DNS over gRPC itself is a customer implementation by CoreDNS, and it's now the DNS standard. Uh, CoreDNS has a focus on server discovery, in fact, we have a native Kubernetes integration. We reached GA in Kubernetes 1.11, and we reached the default in 1.13. So if you're using Kubernetes now, you're probably going to use CoreDNS. Uh, also, CoreDNS is a CNCF incubating level project, and we're looking for graduation really soon. There are several reasons for DNS to be used in service discovery. First. DNS is a nice and flexible indirection. With this indirection, you can easily change your service endpoint without changing any underlying network infrastructure. DNS is easy and simple for everyone, so it could be a common language shared and used by developers, DevOps, and IT operations. DNS has been there for a long time, so it's really part of the existing IT infrastructure. This really helps in a hybrid environment where you have services deployed both inside and outside of the Kubernetes cluster. The finally, DNS is distributed in nature. It may not be the most sophisticated distributed system, but it really scales very well. There are also limitations for DNS to be used in server discovery. First, DNS uses UDP and the UDP's connection list. So DNS is not reliable. DNS is also not secure because encryption is rarely used in any configurations for, for DNS. The UDP overall performance could be better than TCP, but this is actually misleading for DNS. The reason is that DNS typically have a very small packet size in the scale of 100 to 200 bytes. With such a small packet size, a lot of CPU cycles are actually wasted on soft IRQ interrupt. The situation is even worse when jumbo frames are enabled. For example, on AWS, the default MTO is 9001, which is much larger than the 1500 you normally see every day. Another issue with DNS is that the DNS is very hard to diagnose because typically there's no error code. You also see service error and DNS infrastructure error, and it's hard to distinguish them. We could use core DNS or gRPC to address some of the issues. The idea is to use the same DNS and UDP for localhost communication. For localhost, package loss really happens. For cross-host communications, however, we use gRPC, which is much more reliable and much more secure. This is a diagram that shows the configuration in our production. At each node, we have one core DNS server. The cluster DNS, the cluster DNS configuration will always point to the core DNS server on the same host. We use gRPC for cross-host communications. The core DNS server could talk to Kubernetes API server directly, but for scalability and performance reasons, we decided to take the intermediate caching server in between. The, the end result has been really satisfying for us. Uh, we achieved the front-end compatibility because we are reusing the same DNS for server discovery. There is no implementation or configuration change for deploy applications. And for back-end communications, it's much more reliable and much more secure now. Also, our infrastructure scales really well because we use a layered caching. Uh, that's it for today. Thanks for coming to this talk.